first question I wanted to ask you today, since your new book, Fire in the Dark, dives into lots of spiritual ideas, was, well, my question to you is, do you think there is a difference between genuinely believing in something and merely seeing its utility? Put another way, do you think that functional believers extract the same value from religious teachings as those who believe in it literally? That's interesting and kind of a tough question. Um, there's definitely a difference, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm probably, I guess, somewhere in the middle of that, uh, if that makes any sense personally. Uh, Ag agnostic, you'd say? Well, not even agnostic. I, I, I would say that I'm a little bit uh, spiritual. Like the concepts I write about, I actually believe. And, mm -hmm. uh, but in, in the sense of them being like 100% literal, um, that might be too far. <laughs> Um, because, you know, I've, I've kind of put these ideas together myself, but they, I do think they represent real things. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I get superstitious about stuff, uh, you know, when it comes to, I'm like, well, that's not what dad would want me to do. You know, like yeah. as far as the putter, the, the father figure or whatever, I'm like, uh, so I, I, I feel like I interact with that kind of stuff on some way, but uh, it's different than, say, uh, someone who's, uh, you know, like deeply devoutly uh, Christian um, might interpret that, um, you know, but a lot of the, I mean, if, if you talk to a lot of like deeply devout Christians, it's not like they feel like they're like God is talking to them all the time, mm -hmm. you know, so they're not on a, you know, like they, they literally believe that certain things are true, but uh, you know, they don't believe they're in direct communication with uh, God all the time. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. What, what is a problem, I think, with uh, a lot of this is that, I, and I saw this uh, a few years ago, it became super trendy for everybody to convert to orthodoxy. And uh, you know, for a lot of people who were like trying to save the West or whatever, uh, they were converting to orthodoxy. And I don't think half those people even believed in Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, but they wanted to be orthodox because it seemed badass and it seemed like, and they were looking at it as a functional thing, like you said. Um, because it was functionally uh, like here, this, this organization has the infrastructure. They believe in the right things for society as a whole. Like they have the whole structure to support things that would be good. So I'm just gonna join that and then go through the motions of believing it, you know, uh, whatever. And maybe it's like marriage, uh, you know, like, you know, like, uh, like maybe it's like, uh, uh, like, uh, I when mean, I say organized, but it, it, like a organized marriage or whatever, uh, where you're, where you're betrothed to someone, uh, you know, maybe maybe love grows over time, you know, <laughs> you know like that kind of thing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people become, you know, you know, they go through the motions until like fake it till they make it, you know, in terms of like that becomes very meaningful to, to them over time, and I think that that's probably possible, uh, mm -hmm. because you know you do have a different relationship with things like that when you uh practice a a religion on a regular basis uh it, it we add our own meaning th meaning to things mm -hmm. uh you know yeah you know, i i remember when i was uh you know i had my land out of vault gang and uh you know it, you know, like i said you do become superstitious you have these things mean certain things to you over time and when you're interacting with those concepts all the time um you know, you know, I'd, I'd be like, well, I'm not going over to the fray altar because he and I are having issues right now. And, you know, like, it, 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 you know, it, 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 it would become a very involved and real thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just don't personally, I mean, I, I have problems. I do come from maybe more an atheistic background and I don't like to put hard. This is what happened on mm -hmm. everything. But, uh, you know, I, I definitely do like a, a I do feel like there's something bigger. I, I feel very lucky that uh, like almost a weird, like a weird prophet at this point that I, I've said a lot of things that uh, yeah, have, have come to pass. It may be that I wish wouldn't have, uh, you know, like, and, you know, I feel like I've been able to see things uh, sooner than other people. And I feel like I've, that's some kind of gift. Uh, so, you know, I, I always say with the, uh, ironically, and this is probably going to get me in trouble with whoever the viewers are. Uh, but uh, ironically, Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, 
once it, about black magic he said if you if you if you use it uh don't talk trash about it like if you, if you use it in a work don't talk trash about it <laughs> so i i worst possible example but it's kind of a good thing i think when you when you have some kind of experience that's good um just let it ride you know, like you don't have to be there trying to explain it away. That's the tendency with modernity is to explain everything away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if something good is happening and uh, it's related to these ideas that you're talking about, then like, uh, yeah, let it ride. Mm -hmm. Don't don't try and explain it away. So long answer, but all right. Cool. Yeah, I was raised Catholic. And right around the time I, I, was, I think I was like 18, 19. And I went into my whole atheist phase. I was listening to Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, all those guys. Oh, I'm not same. I was raised yeah. Catholic and I also did that. Yeah. yeah. So you probably have a similar idea of when you just totally flip and you feel like you've been lied to and you're like, oh, yeah. this is all bullshit. I'm trying to the tell angry me. atheist phase. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I'm, tr yeah. I'm trying to tell my parents how they, they've, they're, they got it all wrong. And, you know, and then as I actually, what happened for me was I was, I was going through that. And then I experimented with psilocybin when oh. I was younger and it just like blew me, like blew me away. I just felt this, I was overcome with this sense of God and the universe, you know, that typical psychedelic mystic experience. If you've ever experienced something like that. Sure. And uh, I was like, okay, maybe there's something more, more to all of this. And just as I've grown and matured, almost all of the teachings, like we were saying, the functional teachings of Catholicism or Christianity. It's like, I, I came to realize those make your life better. <laughs> if you actually follow what's in there, it can make your life better. You know, without yeah. a, like, there's no, if, if you're an atheist, your framework can be anything. Right. So you're just kind of, you're, you're chaotic. You're looking around, you're, you're kind of, well, I'll, I'll just buy anything. And that's, there's a danger to that. So. Yeah. And that's, what's been happening right now i mean like you, you've seen like in the world uh all the atheists are like falling for every damn thing the government's saying and every day like uh, it, it's uh it's kind of comical because they consider themselves skeptics but uh you know if you slap a, a degree on something they'll be like oh whoa, well, okay well the, someone with a degree said it so it yeah. must be real and uh you know that's more real than god you know and uh at the same time you look at uh, like like uh i'm out in utah here so i have a lot of mormons Mm -hmm. uh, around me and my, uh, a lot of my good friends are Mormons. Um, my uh, business partner, Tanner Guzzi, uh, is a Mormon and, uh, you know, I'm never going to be a Mormon. That's not my, clearly not my jam, yeah. but, um, at the same time, the stuff that he, they have a real tribe mm -hmm. and they have a real social organization and they, they have a lot of things figured out, uh, they, they and they are, you know, very functional and, Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I do think that's probably the way you should probably raise kids. And that's, yeah, that's a really good family organization. And, and you're doing a lot of things that are good, you know, whether or not the specifics of the religion, whether you agree with them or not, but the, yeah, like the struct, the functional structure of it is very, very positive and it's making their lives better. Whereas, you know, it's, it's funny in Utah, you have, uh, I didn't know this until I moved here, but there's like the people who grew up in the church or whatever, and then, you know, there's a small percentage of them that like bounce, you know, when they're and, and are mad about it. And they spend the rest of their lives being mad about the church. And so there's a, this whole like kind of like satanic, super liberal vibe, like if you go downtown, because they're all like super mad at the church. Mm, and uh, okay, okay. but like if you look at those like, oh, it's like, oh, cool, you're you're fat and you're addicted to drugs and you're like, uh, mm. good job. Yeah, like, like you really, you really figured it out there. You know, it's, it's a, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of those people aren't really living really great lives. Uh, they're just mad, you know. So it, it, it's interesting stuff. Yeah, and there's a temptation with, that comes with that too. When you're in the church, you know, you're you're limited. You know, there's there's temptation in being able to indulge in your vices. Sure. When you when you don't have a framework, you don't have to worry about. You know, I can have sex with whoever I want. I can do whatever drugs I want. I can lead what, whatever frivolous life lacking in responsibility that I want. But then when you do that, you're like, wow, the hedonic or the, 
the hedonist lifestyle is not necessarily conducive to overall fulfillment and happiness. <laughs> not over a long term. Not no. A, no, it really isn't. And uh, that's the, you know, uh, like, you know, I, my framework is probably a little bit more, my moral framework is probably a little bit more uh, closer to like, you know, ancient Greeks, but, uh, you know, or, or Romans or whatever. But uh, there still do have to be rules. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, unfortunately, and this is, you know, a touchy subject, but a lot, most people don't want to spend the time making rules for themselves. Because that's the challenge of, you know, that's like the Nietzschean challenge of being, you know, like you, of God being dead yeah. is that you have to make up all your own rules. You're your own God. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, I mean, I'm, you know, being a philosopher is kind of my job. So, I mean, that, that's something I spent a lot of time with, but if I uh, had a different job, uh, that, that wouldn't really be something I'd spend a lot of time doing. So a lot of people need that structure there. I mean, I have very specific things that I'm not comfortable with that I'm not going to do whether I want to or not. Uh, you know, and, um, yeah, and like I do have my own moral framework of what I, I feel is the right thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it to the point of sometimes the right thing is it's damaging to me personally, you know, like my finances or whatever, but it's what I want to do. Uh, what I what I believe is good. And, uh, you know, but a lot of people don't, you know, have a hard time going through that entire philosophical examination of life. And it's so easy when you don't have because, you know, like if you look at the Mormons or you look at Catholics or whatever, they have all these people around them who are going to judge them, you know, like who are going to be like, that's not what we do, you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, but I don't have that, you know, like, I mean, I have it on the Internet, I guess, but like, uh, you know, they don't know what I do with my personal life or what I want to do at home. And, uh, you know, they, they don't they don't have a structure like that. Uh, so really when the going gets tough, you can kind of just change the rules and no one knows. And that's the danger I think of, of, uh, you know, you know, being your own God and all that, it becomes, uh, you know, it's, it, it, you know, being God is a full-time job. <laughs> you know, like it's, yeah. it's hard, it's hard work. So, uh, you know, a lot of people need, I think a structure beyond that because they don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. And to go along with that, you also have a section, I think it's in chapter two of Fire in the Dark, where you talk about people who say someone like me, I, I, I go through this atheist phase, I take some mushrooms, all of a sudden I'm open to the idea of God or uh, some other experience that opens me up to the idea of something bigger. I sure. start, you start reading about different religions, different teachings, Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, everything. Uh, and you start to... Uh, uh, you talk about something in the book. It was uh, becoming too philosophically flexible when we Frankenstein a bunch of different philosophies together. Right. And my question to you is how do we avoid this pitfall and how do we extract value from various spiritual practices without becoming too wishy-washy? You know, like I, I, one of the things, like if you look at the, if you read Fire in the Dark, it's really uh, set up in a way that it could become its own religion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 you know, I kind of made it that way by design. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem is whether or not I want to be a Pope and I don't know if I want the Pope job. Um, and, and so I've kind of avoided that to a certain extent because I don't really want to tell people what to do mm -hmm. uh, with their lives. Uh, maybe that's where I, I'm screwing up uh, and I should just do that. You know, <laughs> here's what you got to do. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, because people want to hear that, you know, but uh, I don't know if I feel comfortable with being that guy who, who says, here's what your life should be. Um, you know, my life is weird. So I, I feel like it's uh, not, I'm a, not the right guy for that job. But uh, I, although like, you know, it, yeah, people got life advice from celibate priests for like how many years? So whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, tell me how to run my family, celibate priest. Okay. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny if you think about it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But, uh, you, know, you know, it's it, so, yeah, it's, I think you do need to figure out what those guidelines are mm. um, and stick to them. And uh, I mean, obviously, with what I did with Fire in the Dark is I'm looking at what's 
always true? You know, like what is always good? Uh, you know, like, uh, and it's going to be not, you know, what is good for a group of people that's fighting other group of people? You know, like they're, if, if they're in contention, good is very relative. But what's good within the group and what's good for you personally, a lot of those things are fairly universal. You know, you look at someone like Jordan Peterson and you're like, this guy is just giving dad advice, mm -hmm. you know, like, and dad advice really doesn't change for men. You know, I, there's, there's some things that are very consistent. I mean, you can read, mm -hmm. um, uh, works and days, uh, you know, and it's basically dad advice given, but like, you know, a few thousand years ago, yeah. it's like the same dad advice. And if you read like the Habamal, um, that again, it's a lot of, it's like, uh, you better can't stay in bed all day if you want to get anything done. Get up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, like there's very simple advice that's probably always true. So, um, I think the the challenge is is uh, re really interesting is finding out what that is and how you should behave and how you shouldn't behave. Mm. I mean, I think uh, like personally with the way of men. And writing, you know, like the strength, courage, mastery, honor, and uh, kind of defining what the job of a man is, and uh, what my role is, and what other men should expect from me, uh, that that personally has held me accountable to a lot of things. Because you know, I don't need to do. I mean, we don't we don't need to do so many of these things. You know, I, with yeah. the, uh, I can make it through life and just you know. There's a part of me right now that I'm like, 3D animation is so neat. I would love to just go down a tunnel and just be a nerd and do 3D animation. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, you know, I, it is also a good positive. People expect me to look a certain way. They expect me to, um, you know, maybe train with firearms sometimes and do some martial arts and whatever. And, and uh, that's what really men, that's the kind of stuff men should expect from each other. So that holds me to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's become a firm thing in my life. I mean, I, I, I actually like going to the gym, so it's not really a, a it's not really hard, but uh, I, there is no, maybe I'll take six months off the gym. They, like that, that's not even a real thing for me. You know, like uh, it's not something I would consider. And I guess that's, that's true with a lot of religious things over, over time, you know, like if that's the rule in your religion, you, you know, if you've been practicing it for long enough, it's not really that hard. You come to love it too. You come to just expect it from yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's like, you know, I look, we look at my friend Tanner. I mean, it's not like it's a problem for him not to drink. You know, he's, <laughs> he's never, he's never been drinking, you know, like he, he doesn't, he doesn't drink. And then he watches, I mean, there's nothing that makes you feel uh, more superior than being the sober person in a room full of drunk people. Uh, so he probably feels that his choice is, correct you know you know like because every time you watch people get drunk they act like idiots so like all right i feel like that was the right choice um you know so it's i mean that's not hard for him uh you know whereas i, I do drink and i enjoy it so like you know I, managing how much to drink and when and whatever is a, a constant choice i have to make mm -hmm. so it's you know it's all these kind of um you know it, it is tricky to, to to figure out your rules but i do think it's important to have them and it's not just about what you don't do. So your friend Tanner doesn't drink, but it's also about what you do. So say someone's been working out religiously for the last three years, five years of their life. I don't have any, like, I always look forward to going to the gym. Now yeah. it's, it's something that if you'd have to like lock me down to not go to the gym, quite literally, like what happened in our country. Right. Now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and even then I'll find a way to work out. Yeah. Let's, you know, you create that that uh, uh, standard for yourself in different ways. So I wanted to move on to um, this concept. So how do men protect the perimeter in a culture where the perimeter is less and less distinguishable? Most men today lack a tribe. The division between neighbors is becoming more and more prevalent and personal freedom and dignity was, which was once a common unifier in the West is now coming under question. What words of encouragement would you give to men struggling to find kindling in the modern world? What does starting a fire look like in application in the context of these crazy times? 
I mean, it, it, the, the future is strange uh, from, from where we are right now. Uh, I, I feel like the advice I gave in The Way of Men is still good. Uh, you know, like, it's what I'm always trying to do. It's what other guys are trying to do. Uh, and, and, you know, to go out and find a bunch of guys who have the same kinds of values and ideas and uh, drives and uh, who will contribute to your life instead of take away from it. And, uh, uh, you know, to, to find those guys. I mean, that's ultimately, you know, how, however weird the world gets, you need that in your life. Um, and so you may end up making a decision with those guys someday about what to do about that question that you asked, you know, like yeah. that. But if you don't have those guys, I can tell you that the decision is going to be easy. Uh, you know, not so do you, anything. <laughs> yeah, you're not do anything. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, you need to. It's it's good advice for me. It's good advice for everybody uh, to build that network of men. Um, it's hard. It's, uh, it's, you know, men are busy uh, and they take really male relationships take like years to build good ones. So, um, you know, like that's, that's the, the best thing that anyone can do right now. And also for a lot of people, it just depends on where you are in life and what's going on. Um, I'm, I'm a real strong advocate right now is, you know, find some way to get involved you know, if you hate the community community that you're in, you should move. And if you don't, you know, and if you like the community you're in, you should get more involved in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was really, uh, I was talking to a guy at, at uh, Jiu Jitsu a couple days, you know, a week or so ago. And he was saying that uh, he was, he was like, well, I don't have a voice. I'm not like a big, you know, like I don't have an online presence and I don't have like this, like, what can I do? But then I talked to him further and he's been going to like city council meetings in his small town. And uh, so he's been going to city council meetings and this, you know, this is a, this is a probably 250 pound uh, black belt uh, who's going and sitting at the city council meeting like, like this. And I can tell you that presence means something. <laughs> so, uh, you, know, you know, and that was good to hear. And that's what I think men should be doing. Um, yeah, getting involved because you know there's this has been this thing like oh well we don't need to protect the perimeter or whatever we don't we aren't involved in that anymore because we outsource that yeah. but as we saw over the past two years um that's not necessarily always going to be true well, and and if we let those people run that for us we get the shitty world that they make so if you know it's time for men to get involved in their community in whatever way they feel that they're able to and uh or can be best used like me going down and sitting on a, at a city council thing is probably a bad scene because then it brings like all the baggage that i have that comes with me online and whatever and i'm like that's probably not helping uh but uh you know, for, for uh i just send money <laughs> you know but uh for other people you know that that is the right thing if you're like a, a dude who's a property owner with a family and you have interests and like they're messing with you yeah you should be down there all the time and uh, putting some pressure on some people so that they know that uh, they'll be held accountable. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, I was thinking about the whole idea of the perimeter. It used to be so basic. The perimeter was so obvious. And now, you know, up here in Canada, the uh, vaccine passport situation, the dismissal, dismissal of freedom is it's coming from, you know, in my neighborhood all around me. So it's like, where is the perimeter? Is it just, is it just the, my own house or is it, is it my tribe? And if for people that don't have friends or they don't have a strong tribe that could, you can feel totally lost. You don't really know what to do other than, you know, I'm hitting the gym, I'm eating right. I'm taking care of my own shit, getting my financial independence, own source of income. It's like there, that's me protecting my personal perimeter. But what does that look like? You know, the, you know, you hear a lot of people saying, uh, I, I've been watching some American commentators talk about you know uh the people used to go to go to war for a lot less oh yeah they, they go go to war for like a three percent tax <laughs> and now it's like we're we're being stripped of our freedoms and people are like it's just like i'm not saying that you know let's fight <laughs> but there's a part of you that's just like well where where do we pick our battles yeah and that's what you know like obviously i'm, uh, I'm friends with ian smith and that gym owner who yeah, uh and he's i he's like ian smith a, yeah, he's become a big figure, and uh, 
and you know like he a lot of what he's saying is true and uh, you know I, I went and talked to aubrey huff uh, uh recently and same thing uh if uh, and i've written about this in my work i mean you know one ape weak many apes strong uh <laughs> like if you know <laughs> You know, when you're talking about even like, because uh, you're hearing, seeing this a lot in America right now, it's like, you know, they tried to do a mandate uh, for companies. <clears throat> and uh, no company can have 50% of the people walk out the door uh, and keep running. Uh, almost no business can survive that. Uh, they can, they can, one person can leave and, you know, every single person is replaceable individually. But 50 people are not, you know, in a, in a company of 150 people are not uh, replaceable. Uh, the company like stops working. And uh, that's ironically, you know, like uh, unions used to be like a left wing thing. Uh, you know, like that, like yeah. we should organize. And now it's not. Now they're actually they're, help. They're helping the fight. Yeah. I mean, like, are. yeah, like now it should be uh, now unions, I think it's becoming a, a different thing. It's like, you're seeing, you know, a whole group of guys from the military or a whole group of guy, you know, uh, nurses, uh, like walk out together mm -hmm. and that's powerful. Yeah. And so that's, I think that's, that's really what you need. You know, like uh, when you start calling for war, you don't get to do it for very long and you only get to do it once, but, uh, you know, so you gotta be real careful about how you use those words, yeah. but, uh, as far as, you know, I think the most actionable thing that most people can do is, you know, take a stand, you know, with a lot of people, Yeah. you know, like uh, you know, be willing to go do something with a lot of people. And, uh, you know, we've even talked about it, like, uh, you know, I mean, here, I mean, I mean, like Freedom Land in Utah. So like, we, there's not really a lot going on, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, when they did have a mask mandate for a while, you know, like I'm, I've, I, I've had every crappy job in the world. So I'm not super into like, uh, you know, having it out with someone who's getting paid $15 an hour, yeah. uh, you know, which is, you know, a lot now I was making a lot less when I was doing those same jobs, <laughs> Yeah. you know, but uh, I mean, but money's worth less. So whatever. <laughs> I mean, I know what it's like where you just have to go to work. You know, yeah. like I'm just going to work. I didn't make the damn rules. I just have to say it because they have a camera on me. And, uh, you know, that guy, you know, is not the guy to have to pick a fight with. So yeah. it's like, I don't really mess with those people. But, uh, you know, you walk into a place uh, when there was a mask mandate and three other guys are already not wearing them. You know, everybody's like, <laughs> you know, we just start taking them off. Yeah. Uh, you know, because y y okay, we're not doing that now. It, it is a group thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think that is the answer. You, you know, you know, go out in groups of people. Yeah. You know, like you know, you, being the one guy because you look like a crackpot. You know, like you're like, oh, there's this one crackpot who has a, an axe to grind with uh, you know everybody there. But you know, if if you and your ten friends are all doing the same thing, that's that's been me up here. Just not. I'll go into a grocery store without a mask, and I will be the only person in the entire store. Oh wow! Store. Yeah, and that's hard. And that's hard. Because <laughs> uh, and that's hard because there's a big social pressure. Yeah. Uh, and and you look like the only one. Yeah. And that's and that you know you're not you know, like in a big picture way, but uh, you know it is hard. It's been a little bit encouraging up here. Um, you know, we've had three lockdowns already and mass mandates in and out. And the la this last time around, people are starting to be like, okay, this is kind of bullshit. Like yeah. a lot so I'll go out and every once in a while I'll see another dude with a mask and or not wearing a mask. He'd be like, Yeah, what's up, dude? <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. It's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you need to go hang out with that guy. Yeah. Clearly like he's the cool guy in your yeah, town. You know, um, like, like, like yeah, I mean, friendship. That, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, seriously, though, I mean, that could be a thing, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, where do you find those? I mean, because that's they're they're doing a really good job of crushing any ways that those people would organize online. I mean, mm. you know, like, you know, the, as far as starting a Facebook group or whatever, I mean, that's, you know, they're doing a really good job of crushing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah yeah we're Tele gonna act telegram is the only place to do it really yeah yeah and that's such i wish it was you know like i mean i, I mean have you had any local experience with that or is it just like you know big groups like on like big um I, groups? I personally haven't used telegram all that much i have okay. there's a small local group here that uses it but i don't really like the platform that much it's kind of it's me awful. neither it's all yeah it's 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 a problem because it's uh my thing with telegram is i i had telegram groups like when i was running my own like yeah, tribe um and what it becomes is a giggle box yeah or you know in a lot of for a lot of guys it's like their vent space mm -hmm. where like they go in and post all their angry memes and they you know like they <laughs> you know say who they want to blame for all the big problems of the world and all that shit yeah and uh that's it that's very not productive mm, that's uh, that, that's yeah. interesting you say that because i also had a question about um meme culture and we're talking about what men can do to you know fight against this bullshit going on in the world um i'm guilty of engaging in meme culture i'm guilty of engaging in fear porn you know you're posting things back like, here's all this thing we, this is the thing that we should all be mad about everybody be mad about it Right. You, po you post your stupid little stick guy meme and you think you're all clever and you're sticking it to the man. But like you said, you have a video on YouTube where you talk about that and it's not, you're not fixing anything and posting. Yeah. It's not doing anything. You're just being inflammatory. So I've actually uh, deleted every single meme on my Instagram page. I think I left like two on there. <laughs> cool. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I made that video and now it's like, I, I, I that's one of the things about being a writer as far as making rules for yourself. Right. Um, everybody knows I posted that video, so I can't post memes. Like I can't, like I, can't, yeah. I literally cannot, like I'm prohibited from doing it because I look like an asshole. Uh, so, uh, which is sucks. Cause sometimes memes are funny. Yeah. Sometimes. And, and yeah, I totally get it. Sometimes memes are funny and you know, every once in a while, like I still have a few memes that are more kind of intellectual memes or whatever, but it's just these people that all they're doing is posting memes. And it's just like, it's just an echo chamber. No one following your page who likes those memes is you're not going to change anyone's mind with a meme. Right. You're just going to piss off the other side. The other side's going to post their stupid meme. It's going to piss you off. And then it's just this pissing match. that doesn't really. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's a shame. I wish I was more specific in that video that like jokes are okay. Like if they're just oh, yeah. jokes, uh, like, is there a lot of five, I follow pages that have like memes, you know, uh, yeah. that are, that are just funny and yeah. are about real life. And I think that those, I mean, they're just jokes, yeah. but, uh, the, uh, it, it was specifically like the, the political stick figure memes, you know, where it was very obviously one team making fun of the other team, yeah, but not really accomplishing anything mm -hmm. that I felt like, you know, like. A, it's also the other thing is like if you're talking about we should have higher culture you post stick figures dude like you're literally <laughs> like you're operating at a graffiti level of of, of you know aesthetics mm -hmm. and you, you know, would say we should have great culture um i mean it just seems very uh <clears throat> counterproductive um yeah just th there are better ways uh you know it's it's so it's yeah i think it, it does become a very masturbatory thing i mean it's it's funny to send a little joke to your friend or whatever. I mean, I, I, I sent a TikTok video to my friend the other day, uh, you know, which was just crass and like it had nothing to do with politics or anything. It was just funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but <laughs> like it responded to our, our mutual sense of humor. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's it, it, it's as far <laughs> as using those memes as a way to there's a lot of people, I think, under the illusion that they're using memes to change the world. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you better meme a lot harder because it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's not hard. Uh, you know, like, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, being an, having an anonymous account and posting memes is changing the world a lot less than using your own damn name and saying, like, and, and being the guy that someone else can see, yeah. like, who's in the supermarket also not wearing a mask mm. or, like, be, you know, being a guy who's saying something like, I mean, you know, there's stuff that's just anger porn and there's stuff that like, I feel like, you know, like, I like their project Veritas stuff recently. Um, mm -hmm. I really believe in what they're doing. Oh yeah. And I've been sharing it probably at a risk 
to myself of increasing my shadow ban. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, uh, I'm sure you're not getting points on the algorithm for sharing Project Veritas stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's not helpful, but yeah. uh, I feel like, you know, I, I, I should do that too because yeah. that's, that's being suppressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I try to do a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, know, gotta so be, you gotta be careful. You gotta walk the fine line. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like, well, I, I don't have a voice at all. If I get completely shut down, yeah. then I'm in that thing that other people have to distribute by proxy for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is a fine line, like what's, what's really good and what's useful um, to balance that out. But, uh, you know, I, I do think that there are things that we should share. And, and uh, like I said, I, I think it means a lot. You know, I, I shut some dude down the other day because I just got tired of it. I didn't, didn't do it for so long. Uh, there's just, you know, there's been a trend since probably 2014 of dudes uh, putting, you know, they have their face of some statue, uh, which is not them. And uh, they're, they're, you know, account with some name, which is like, you know, Odin Odinson or like, you know, like something <laughs> Latin. And, uh, he, you know, and they all have, they, you know, they're all like, like noble warriors for whatever, but they're also completely anonymous. And, uh, you know, like, well, that's not very courageous at all, is it? Uh, <laughs> you know, so it, it's, uh, you know, like, I think it means a lot more to have real people and you also get a more serious discussion when you have real people using their real names because man, you know, you can get, put a the anonymous account together and say any damn thing. Yeah. No, you're not accountable for it. No. You don't, no, no one's one, going to find it. Yeah. You can walk away from it at any time. You can be like, Ooh, I was wrong. Delete. Uh, you know, yeah. like that's, I can't do that. I, if I, if I run my mouth, I, I, you know, I should, I said 10 years ago that people still throw in my face, you know, like that, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. or that I have to explain away or say why I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if you're a guy who has a business, you know, like a business in a small town or something, and yeah. you make a statement, uh, everyone knows that you made that statement and it's going to have mm -hmm. an effect on your life. So you're going to be less likely to just run your mouth and say any damn thing that is your feeling right yeah. now. I mean, cause I got some feelings. I mean, my car windshield, my, the windshield of my truck knows my feelings. <laughs> like, like as I'm driving around, this is some bullshit. <laughs> you know, like that, that, that's feelings. And that's what uh, Facebook and all those things have really extracted from us is like, here's a medium to put down your feelings at the imminent moment I, re I refuse to go on twitter i can't even go on twitter <laughs> oh say because it's so bad like i have same. a page i have a page but i fucking i try to look at stuff that's more positive on there but it's like you go on twitter and it's just just because of the the characters that you can share it's just like right Bleh. you know that's all it is just someone fucking vomiting their emotions and it's just like this like super inflammatory shit it's just like normalized bullying yeah, normalized like bullying and like everyone, it's it's like overly democratic. Like, uh, you know, like I don't want some retard like who doesn't know anything adding me all the time. Like, like it, yeah. it's and that's what, yeah, it's it's kind of gross. Uh, it's it's I don't have a Twitter either for that reason. There's Not a part because people think that I've been banned and I'm like, no, I have, I literally refuse to. Yeah. And uh, you don't you know, need to, so, there's no reason yeah, to have Twitter. I mean, it's always good to have, I mean, that's a struggle. It's like, do I have, you know, could I be selling more books, making more money or, or, you know, getting my message out there more or whatever, probably. But uh, I just feel like it contributes to something so evil uh, in society. And mm -hmm. it really is the lowest common denominator, except for possibly now TikTok. Uh, but <laughs> I don't but go TikTok, TikTok is like at least funny. It's like yeah. life affirming and like whatever. I mean, it's a little ridiculous and lacks a lot of dignity in many cases, but I'm like, well, what could you do with that? I, that's a challenge of all these social media things. Like, well, how would I do it better? I know how people are doing it, but how would I do it better? How do I want to do it? I mean, I'm kind of bummed with Instagram right now, just, just cause they suck so much with so many uh, uh, things. But for a long time, Instagram, like that was like an art form for me. Like I, like, and uh, I, I really, it was, it was fun. 
and I, and I really liked it. And uh, it really, I felt that I was doing, presenting myself in the way that I wanted to present myself rather than just like doing what everyone else was doing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. And I feel like I was putting out like pretty high quality stuff, like you not know, not just in words, but I mean like, uh, aesthetically, you have a very unique like high quality aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and then and then I realized it was so soul crushing um, because it's kind of become Twitter too. Uh, is that my my buddy Tanner uh, realized? Yeah, because he's very aesthetically oriented, uh, and and he he's like. You know, at first he was for a quote or whatever. He was making these really like you know beautiful like images with what whatever. But he realized he gets way more play if he just reposts a tweet. Yeah, like a picture of a tweet. <laughs> it gets like so much more engagement for him than mm-hmm. the same thing in a way nicer format. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, and uh, same for me as soul soul crushing. You know, the day that I got like three thousand likes on a thing about not watching television news uh, like that was i reposted from gab yeah. and uh i'm like man last month i drove five hours out into the desert and took pictures of myself you know in a work of art yeah. <laughs> like yeah. and i got more likes off of a picture of me bitching about tv you know like you like well, it's it, it, it very soul crushing you know like it- i would much rather you know, but you got to still keep putting the good stuff out there, the quality stuff that you feel like you want to share with people. I think that, uh, cause that's the only reason you, that's the only way you make a better change, you know, whatever be the change you want to see in the world, whatever, um, you know, to put out something that you believe in rather and the, the way it should be done uh, rather than just caving and doing like, you know, Jack Donovan dance videos, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, which I'm actually a really good dancer, so I could totally do that. But I'm like, I'm like not. I'm like, no, that's the wrong thing. That is not appropriate for our message. We cannot do that. Uh, you know. I mean, you could like merely farming for likes. You could create all types of negative content to farm for likes. I think. Oh, yeah. I think about that with my content. Like I kind of went through my feed. And I was like, oh, you know what? That's just kind of negative and shitty. Like, I don't really, I'm just going to delete that one. There's just certain things where I'm like, well, rather than, you know, like I posted a few things, like instead I made a little funny, like satire post about the vaccine passport, but I called it the fitness passport where you had to like track all your, your workouts and what you ate through this like government yeah. mandated passport. It got like 1400 likes and I have like a pretty small page. Like I have under 3000 followers. But I got yeah. 1,400 likes, which is pretty good. That, that's hella good. I've yeah. never gotten 14,000 likes on anything. I said 14, <laughs> 1,400 likes. Oh, 1,400. I got yeah. like 14,000. <laughs> I feel like no. I'm no, like, no. you're in the big kids <laughs> league now, man. <laughs> one day, one day. But I just, yeah, yeah. for me, that was like, a, it went kind of viral. Like people were sharing it around. And I was like, it wasn't really rude. Like I was just saying, I was just making like an ironic post. But I'm like, every time I post something and it kind of takes a little bit of a jab, people tend to like that. But I'm, I'm thinking to myself, do I want to like, what is the balance? Because like, you know, in your writing, you, you take, you take jabs at people, but you, you do it in a very intellectual, articulate or artistic way. You know, you're talking about, I, I, I try to take jabs at ideas at ideas. Maybe that's, yeah, the, yeah. I don't, I, I very rarely, it, it, not since probably no man's land. Have I, that, that one, I did a lot of jabs at people, but, uh, like you know academic feminists and stuff like that but jabs at uh ideas ideas i think are okay i mean because then then you're talking about a concept uh but yeah going after people individually that's hey that's rough business uh you know like uh prepare to get back what you put out there you know like uh and then so i've i think that that's i've taken a higher road with that kind of stuff i don't think it's yeah i don't think i've i've haven't really taken jabs at individuals as much as just jabs and ideas i'm sure i've done you know like our prime minister or something like that but just sure yeah no i totally agree with that and if you're attacking the idea or if you're trying to dismantle the idea that's going to dismantle the individual's ideas because they're they're possessed by those ideas right so it's you're 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 doing the same thing yeah yeah it's it's 
And that's why I th- that's why I think Twitter is so gross because it is all about going after people. Uh, yeah. you know, and like uh, legitimately like hashtag someone's name is trash, and then everyone's just like blah 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 blah. Yes, they're trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like yeah, wow, and, it, and they're it, just tr- it, it, yeah, I feel like Twitter is <laughs> is just mean girls. You know, mm-hmm. basically it's 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 just mean gossip girls, uh, you know, like uh like uh, talking shit. And uh, that's, it's really a gross uh, form of culture. Like in, in Fire in the Dark, I did a really big, uh, you know, I, I did a, sh- a short chapter on uh, George Washington, because uh, I feel like he symbolizes all yeah. the three I really like that types one. that I was talking about. And, <clears throat> uh, you know, reading the biography of his life uh, that I read by Ron Chernow, uh, I really do think what would Washington do is a really good uh, barometer at most times. It's not right for everything because obviously very different world, different. Would he use Twitter? (laughs) No. I mean, I I think that's a good question. Would Washington tweet? No. No, he would not tweet. Uh, Or his office would tweet after he had made a decision about something. But it wouldn't be like, oh, well, so-and-so is trash. Yeah. (laughs) Like he would never do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he wrote some emotional letters, but they were like letters to a person or about a person or whatever. But uh, he, uh, you know, his public states, statements were very measured and careful. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think that that's always a good reminder. I mean, I'm not I'm not Washington by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I do try to. You know, what am I putting out there? And uh, like, is that something that he would be comfortable putting out there or is it just like. Mm-hmm. You know, am I doing it for likes? Am I doing it for uh, an angry reaction to somebody? You know, it, it, or is it really substantive and the right thing? Mm-hmm. And I think that we really are in a time right now where we need men who are not in the game playing phase a- in terms of like the, uh, like we're not just playing a game online, like see who can get the most likes, da 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 da, a popularity contest or whatever, but guys who are really going to think about not what is the most inflammatory thing or the most uh, sexy thing or whatever, mm. but men who are going to sit and think about what they actually believe is right, and say that seriously, and put that forward without the angry emotion, whatever. Yeah. But this is this is what I believe should be done, and and in a solemn, serious voice. And I feel like that's what that's what Washington would do. Uh, and I think we need more guys who are willing to do that, and not just rage against the machine, you know. And just but uh, say like, here's here's a step that I think would take. And I've I've made a lot of statements like that. I I usually do it in stories on uh, Instagram. But um, you know, like what's I'm not interested in here. Like I've hung out with a lot of extreme people over the year, over my whole life. I'm, I'm really good at attracting and going towards extreme things. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I extreme ideology, extreme, whatever is, is cool because it can be like a, you know, a pressure point, but you really need, at this point, I'm like, I'm looking at like, don't tell me you're, Show me the flow chart is what I keep saying to people. Show me the flow chart. Like, like where, how does your plan get from A to B? Because otherwise you actually don't have a plan. You don't even have a, an idea of a plan. Like, is there any reasonable path? Like, well, we should just blank is not, that's not a grown up conversation. Like come to me with, I think if we did this, this would happen. And then, you know, we could, you know, achieve this. Yeah, and I, that's that's a grown-up discussion. You know, like whether it's, you know, like, uh, and all these groups have the same problems, like the extreme groups. You know, it's like, yeah, obviously, I yeah, like you spend some time hanging out with white nationalists, and like they, it's like, show me the flowchart where you get to ethno state because I don't really, they, there's no flowchart that gets there. Uh, you know, like that's that's not real, and uh, you know, at least I don't think so. And the same is true for super, like super religious people um, who feel like they need to impose their religion on everybody constantly. Show me to where we get to the point where you live in like Jesus world. And uh, that's all that is there. Yeah, there's and a there's lot of, if, any, 
if that is going to happen, it's good. There's going to be a lot of violence in between. Right. Right. And, 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 and put, put the violence in your flow chart. Cause that's there. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, like all these people like, well, we should just uh, like, you know, like overthrow the government. Okay. Uh, like one of the things I like to remind people of right now is that like even secession requires votes. Like, like when the South left the, tried to leave the North, they, they voted on it. <laughs> like they had a big, there was a political thing that happened. And, you know, I'm always for secession. Uh, I think smaller communities and smaller groups are better. Um, and I think that that's uh, fairly objective. Uh, you know, like they serve the people that they're designed to serve. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, but, you know, that is a political solution. You know, like, it's not just like, we're all going to like stomp our feet and be mad. Uh, so all these things, I mean, there are possibilities um, but you have to, you know, re reach some kind of like hey, grown up discussion. Well, how do we get there? Cause I, I want to hear it. You know, like there are a lot of good ideas or places that would be, there are a lot of ideas that would be a hell of a lot better than what we've got going on right now. Absolutely. But, uh, show me how we get there. Uh, and I, and now I'll, I'll support it. Like if you're doing something smart, I'll support it. But if you're just yapping and running your mouth, that is not real. You know, like, like I said, I support the Project Veritas stuff. Like, we know these people are lying. I will, I will 100% tell you, send you money to keep showing that they're lying. Because yeah. I know they're lying. You know they're lying. <laughs> yeah. like, like, that needs to come out. And that, that, that's God's work. <laughs> like, like that, that dude's doing God's work right now. And same with, same with uh, that's why I wanted to go visit, visit Ian. Uh, you know, like he was the one person that stood up when no one else will would. Yeah. And those people were doing God's work at this point uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to, to, to like bookend with religion here. Uh, you know, like they're doing good things. Yeah. And I can support people who are doing things that need to be done and actually taking action. And, uh, you know, they might not have no one ever has the, you know, George Washington didn't have the flow chart of the Revolutionary War worked out, I'm sure, because it took a hell of a lot longer than he thought it was going to. But, uh, you know, have some kind of reasonable plan. And then, you know, I want to hear from the people with reasonable plans, you know, and that's, uh, you know, not, and there's a lot of people, I think, that are just, it's so much safer to worship this unreachable ideal. And not, I mean, obviously, I'm a big fan of unreachable ideals in terms of the way we got our guide our lives, but in terms of, um, you know, like some utopian vision, mm -hmm. um, utopian visions are not like real. Uh, and every time they try to implement them, whether they're Nazis or communists or whatever, it's a bad scene for yeah. everybody involved. <clears throat> and and so, where do you, you know, the these people end up making like, uh, we say, you know, perfect, the enemy, the good. And, uh, you know, well, we're not going to ever get to perfect. How can we do better is the correct discussion to have. Mm -hmm. You said something earlier uh, when we were talking about people just kind of running their mouth and just saying random inflammatory things, not well thought out these, these, you know, these graffiti style memes. And I want to segue that into, you're, t you're talking about men needing to, you know, really put some thought into what they're saying and lay out their ideas in a very, you know, presentable, respectable manner. And that, that leads us into art, art and culture, which is something that I don't want to, I don't know, necessarily want to say our team, but the, the men that are more traditional minded, they're interested in, you know, reading books like you would write or, you know, they're interested in Jordan Peterson or some of these other masculine uh, development influencers. And I'm wondering why, why you think more conservative minded people have totally dropped the ball on art of any kind. Um, a few reasons. Uh, one, like, I think American culture is really bad specifically and uh i want to write about this i'm not just i'm just not sure exactly how to frame it but uh there's a big jock nerd problem in america 
Uh, you know, like that's part of American culture for I don't know why, because it wasn't it wasn't when George Washington was around. Uh, you know, it wasn't cool to be stupid. Uh, you know, what masculinity and stupidity were not like associated yeah. in his era. Meatheads. It's cool to be a meathead kind of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm a total douchebag meathead, but like, I, you know, I also write books and stuff, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, like the best men are are you know, you know, like good at both, uh, you know, the being good at being a man and also smart things. Uh, you know, like they and they care about art and beauty and 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 so forth. I mean, men built all the beautiful cathedrals in Europe and and <clears throat> all the you know, they, they produced most of the art in human society. But I think there became with with modern art. I think uh, modern art became very transgressive, and it became all about really kind of shitting on masculinity and and. Uh, anything that most men yeah. with sense like can't remember uh, what the exact sorry to cut you off i sure, can't remember sure. what the exact quote was you said um it's not that men don't like modern art it's that modern art doesn't like men or something like that and that yeah that, that stood out to me yeah and it's true i mean uh mm. yeah it's it's i mean modern art is, is very anti-masculinity yeah and uh anti you know, there's obviously a huge movement against figurative art at some point and, uh, you know, towards things that were objectively ugly. In the way that we're seeing the world shift to like, we should all worship this really morbidly obese woman and she's the new beauty icon. Mm -hmm. I mean, art was doing that, you know, whatever, 50, 100 years ago. Yeah. Like, here's something ugly. Boom. You know, like, uh, whereas, <laughs> it, it, you know, we have, uh, you know, men were concerned with what is beauty. And I think in American culture, especially it, it became seen as effeminate to care about any of those things, mm. which is stupid. I mean, mm. I, I know a Navy SEAL who's like a fantastic artist. Mm. Uh, you know, like there's all kinds, the guys who are best at this stuff are that's, not that guy. That's actually, uh, that's actually yeah. what, stood out to me with what you're posting in your work you're actually engaged in the arts you're an artistic masculine person which is it's kind of unique now because you don't see that a lot and you know i've been making music for the last 13 years i was you know i was in a band i was touring i was out in toronto like trying to make it in that scene <clears throat> and i actually fell out of love not necessarily with music but i fell out of love with the pursuit of trying to you know, be a music producer, be a, make it a career, because I noticed that everyone that was around me, as I was, you know, I'd be reading Jordan, P it, it was taboo to read Jordan Peterson, by God, like, if you're reading Jordan Peterson, you're like, Oh, like, he hates women, don't you know, like, right, you, start, right. you start to realize, like, you're in this, as you get as your life gets more orderly, and you become, you embody your masculine energy, whatever you want to say, right, you start to realize like everyone around me is resentful. Everyone is anti-man. They're, they're, they're feminist, they're Marxist and everybody like you, like every artist, like, let's say like the BLM thing happens. Every single artist that is popular posted a black square. Oh, totally. It, it's to the point where I don't know if you've heard of a, a rapper, his name's Tom McDonald. Okay. He posts, he po he has songs about, you know, kind of shitting on BLM being like, way too extreme and all this stuff and he's not necessarily like a right-wing artist but he just right. comes on he just criticizes things that no one else will criticize he explodes viral videos it's like this guy that no one else is doing this he's literally the one, there's one or two artists i can think of that are actually saying things that you know the other side is thinking and uh because of this the the like the woke social justice marxist have a monopoly on culture. And that's a yeah. really big problem. You know, if you want to change, if you want to change the, the political landscape, what, what is that? What's that phrase? It's uh, politics is downstream of culture. If we, if we're not engaged in the culture, then the, the stupid memes we post aren't going to do shit. Those don't touch people as much as art. Yeah. I mean, can you influence as much as many people as one Hollywood movie? You know, no. like that's, I mean, like, <laughs> That's uh, really, I mean, that's, that's where we're at. 
yeah, and you know, I've yeah, like just hanging out with like far right people like I like years ago. Uh, there are all the, there are stuff was all like super melancholy and sad and like about the death of the West and blah 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 blah. And yeah. even like even at that time, I like totally recognized them. Like this is not a winning angle. I mean, like, can you make something as life affirming as like dance music? <laughs> you know like something that people makes people happy yeah. uh you know like can you do something that doesn't <clears throat> that doesn't uh, shit on men but is also you know like positive uh you know like that's the challenge uh because you know I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people realizing that culture is the problem now i mean they're a little late to the game <laughs> but uh they're realizing that culture is a problem and you're seeing like there's a lot of christians you know like uh being very anti Hollywood and trying to create their own movies and whatever, but they're all very didactic. They're all very like, um, here's our message to counteract their message. Yeah. But to really make art, um, it has to be a little beyond that. Yeah. I can't be just explicitly political. Cause that's why like Saturday night live isn't funny and hasn't been funny for decades. Cause it's just <laughs> people, it's like liberals from New York laughing at their own jokes. Uh, you know, and, and it, for anyone else, it's not funny. Uh, and it's offensive, but uh, if you can touch something that's a little bit more universal, and you look at like, I mean, the people who make superhero movies are very disappointing human beings, I find. But uh, superhero movies are, you know, like they're being co-opted, but still, I mean, how many young men, or you know, now men who are my age even, have like a visceral emotional attachment to like superman or luke skywalker or something like that 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 is part of their really heroic pantheon uh and really moves them emotionally and uh you know like the guys who like you know like the thor movies or or whatever those things because they touch on these universal themes that i write about um but they're not like being like for the right, you know, or, or for, for, you know, like, you know, they're not, they're not messaging, mm -hmm. you know, they are telling a story that's always been told. Mm -hmm. Here is the man who did the thing that no one else would do and you know, went to fight the monster that no one else would fight. Mm -hmm. And that's the oldest story in the world. Yeah. And those are the kind of stories I think that we really need to tell again without being tempted to make everything a secret like little message about yeah. propaganda and like that's kind of that's kind of also you should vote for trump you know like you, know, like, yeah. you, know, like, you can't work that in yeah you know, like it has to literally be about the heroic journey <clears throat> and uh, i think that when you can do that and then not have everyone in the movie come out and say shitty things uh because that's what happens now it's like you put out this amazing movie that's like inspiring and uh yeah, like heartbreakingly beautiful and then you watch you know like your chris evans or whoever go on in some feminist magazine and be like wow i think that women should rule the world you know like that like you <laughs> watch them let's like, counteract the entire message of what they what men went to see that movie for yeah and uh you know if you can get just get some guys you know like an alternate hollywood uh where they're making this they're making the same quality of art but not just going out of their way to like message really hard in the opposite direction uh, i mean i i never want to hear what hans zimmer talks about says about anything because it'll break my heart because i'm mm. sure he's right in line with all the rest of them but like <laughs> like, like Dude, I, that's that's I, a i don't want to if i problem. would see that i would i would i would turn the page i like don't want to see that because like you know like that's like the soundtrack to my entire soul and i can't really like i i don't want i don't want that messed up you know no that makes sense because uh i've had that where i've listened to an artist and you find out about their their political views or their social views and you're just like oh <laughs> i can't yeah. even it's hard for me to like it's been tainted the art has been tainted yeah and, uh, and i think back in the day you could do that you know, like, you know, like, 
you know, if I didn't, you know, if I if I didn't listen to any art, music made by left wing people, I wouldn't have any music to listen to. You know exactly. what I mean? Like that's. Yeah. But it's uh, increasingly though, because the world is so divided, and because it's not about superficial things anymore. It's literally like freedom and slavery. Yeah. Uh, y- you know. Yeah. No. When I hear that from somebody, yeah, I I can't. I am done mm-hmm. with that person. You know, I don't want to hear their their stuff anymore. I don't want to. I I really used to enjoy watching um, like series and stuff on on like HBO and and uh, uh, whatever Amazon or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I I haven't watched anything like that in months. <clears throat> uh, I I just refuse to support any of it at this point because they're it's no longer like well they have slightly different views about like gays or whatever. It's now like y- you guys are literally supporting like tyranny. They want me to be in a camp. <laughs> yeah, they want me to be in a camp. It's not, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we can't, and that's that's not even a joke anyway. It's like it's, it's not even that is that is no longer hyperbole. Mm. And you know, like it, it's that's very disturbing. And so yeah, no, I I can't sit and listen to you. You know, I don't want to engage in the product that you've created mm. at all. Uh, you know, because it's not a joke anymore, and so that's the that's the problem. So we need people who are, you know, willing to make the leap, and I think that that's a possibility because it's not like Hollywood's producing a whole hell of a lot lately, anyway. Mm-hmm. It's in California, so you Hollywood, know, like Hollywood is dying. YouTube probably does. Like YouTube is better than Hollywood. Yeah, you know, yeah. People. I mean, and there's, I mean, and TV. I mean, like I was watching. I don't know what the difference is between. I was watching Tim. I was watching the James O'Keefe on Tim Pool last yeah. night, and right. uh, you know, on YouTube. And I don't watch a lot of that kind of stuff, and I probably should watch more of it. But you know, what's the difference between that and sitting and watching like some Fox News commentators? Yeah. Oh, I'd way rather watch the Tim Cast than listen to Fox. Yeah. Or- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's you know, like there was before there was like a huge quality difference and all <laughs> that kind of stuff. And but now it's like, well those people are no less legitimate than those people well it's like the joe rogan podcast probably has more reach than a lot of these mainstream news networks oh absolutely i don't know what the exact numbers are but i'm sure he may when he says something people trust him they know him they know he's not just going to bullshit them right whatever your opinion on joe rogan is like you Yeah, yeah he's uncensored he's unfiltered and you know it's just a genuine conversation and you know that's why podcasting is so awesome because people that that's where I get a lot of my, I'd rather listen to podcasts than the news, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's genuine depending on what podcast you're listening to. Of course. Yeah. I mean, everybody has their own spin, but <clears> obviously <throat> the news sure as hell does. So <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, so it, it gets more, you know, information. I mean, like even comedy stuff, I said, the, my dad, uh, yeah, I, I send him stuff cause he likes the kind of stuff I like. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I said the Hodge twins. I'm like, I've never listened to these guys. With uh, the I love the Hodge twins. Yeah, I've never, I'm like, shit. I've never listened to these guys with the volume on, but they are hilarious. <laughs> like, like, they are really funny. Even just and, their non-political stuff is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, were, they were hilarious just bitching at each other. Like, yeah. like, like, uh, like uh, yeah. yeah, I said that to my dad. I'm like, that's that's as good as anything I'd see on, <laughs> yeah, on uh, mainstream TV. Uh, so, you know, I think that there's just a new generation of, and that's why obviously YouTube and all those want to crush all those people that aren't on the right page. Mm. And, and that's the real challenge to the world is if we have enough time to uh, make alternative methods of distribution for those, awesome. for those uh, things. And because uh, we have the technology, uh, it's just people, different people with money have to put money behind it. And that's the, been the challenge. It's like when you get a competitor to, um, you know, Facebook or Instagram or YouTube that can really start taking market share, but also isn't just going to become this weird, you know, only politics 24 hours a day because that's what most of them are. You know, like it, it's, you know, you go on Gab and I'm like, I'm waiting to see anything that's on Gab that's not, you know, that's not just the latest news from Epic Times or Alex Jones. 
you know, like that's, I you know, even, I, want, I haven't even I want, gone on cap. Yeah. I, I, well, I wanted, I, I sent him money cause I'm like free speech. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and I know that it includes a lot of people that I'd rather not be associated with, but like, that's what free speech is. And so, you know, it's, uh, I would love to see more stuff like that. I mean, I don't know if that's the right one and I have a hard time getting any, I think because it is so political, I think it if was, I start to post <clears> a lot of like really inflammatory far right stuff, I get like a million followers on fucking there. Uh, yeah. But I don't want that. There was an interesting pod uh, podcast. I can't remember which one it was, but they were talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and the decentralization of finance. And they were also talking about that technology being involved in social media. So that social media was decentralized. Like it was just, it was just a system. There wasn't anybody at the, at the top, like, you know, uh, censoring it and stuff like that. I I don't really understand that technology or how, how it would would work or play out, but that would be, um, it would be so amazing if Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, if all the rules applied, if the rules just applied evenly to everybody, right. You know, like if we could just have a conversation, like, I. Not that we've said anything controversial in this podcast, in my mind. Not really. Just, yeah. But just the fact that we're talking about any sort of, you know, every time I say anything that's like anti-mainstream narrative, it's like, oh, am I going to get shadow banned for this? Am I going to get, and right. it's like, at first it was like, oh, you're being over the top. But literally, like there are people who say basic things that I would not deem controversial that are getting either shadow banned or just one day their Instagram will be gone. Yeah. And it's like, well, fuck man. I want to have the, I just want to have the conversation. I'll even have conversations with people who disagree with me, but like, I can't even, we can't even have the conversation when there's no dialogue and there's just all this censorship. It's, it's making people angry. And those angry people are going over to gab and then just venting all their anger out. So it's this weird, it's this weird toxic situation. Yeah, yeah, and that's what they want. They want people to be afraid and to get in line. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously for a lot of people, that's going to work. And then, But for the people who are not inclined to do so, um, it just makes them look more sketchy. It, <laughs> it, makes, it makes everything that they're doing, it, it just validates anyone who is like, I don't believe you. And I, I, like, I don't trust you and I don't believe you. And now you won't let me talk. Uh, mm-hmm. That that validates why I shouldn't trust you and believe you. You know, mm-hmm. like that's you're not you are not acting out of goodwill now. And I think that a lot of people were seeing that. You know, I just you know the, it's a numbers game. Mm-hmm. You, know? you posted uh, on your story. You posted uh, the Tim Cast, <clears throat> and you said something about Wikipedia. Um you said they were, they kind of demonize you on Wikipedia and I actually read your Wikipedia oh, and, it's a and I'm fire. and I'm just like, dude, like, do these people, have they read his books? Like, do they, I, I'm curious, like anybody who talks about these things, you know, they'll, they'll be shit. Remember when Jordan Peterson came out and they would just say all types of shit about him, And yeah. it was just like, dude, you've never, have you, have you listened to a, an hour of this guy speaking? Yeah, like that's very common now. It's this this character assassination, and it's like even something you've done ten years ago or in the past. They haven't. It's just like they'll they'll dig, they'll find something, they'll put it at the top. They did that with Ian Smith, you know, when Ian Smith he's uh, been in prison and and stuff yeah, yeah. like that, and they just threw that out there. Oh yeah, and it was like someone dug that up. They they used it against him, and that's going to be more and more prevalent. And we were talking earlier about you know, all these people being anonymous online, it's because they see that kind of shit and they fear those repercussions. But, but I thought Ian Smith, the way he handled that whole situation was just yeah. abs- absolutely amazing. Like he just, he just owned it a hundred percent and pretty much just said, fuck you, I'll own this. Yeah. And I mean, you, you have to do that because you, you can't run from the information, yeah. you know, like, uh, uh, like obviously, yeah. Like, Honestly, the, I'll, I'll be straight with you. The, the Wikipedia, I've lost sleep over the Wikipedia thing. Like yeah. that, I, I, I tried to get involved. I tried to fix it. Uh, I, you know, I was on there arguing with that bitch who runs it. <laughs> I, and, and, and like, literally, it's two genderqueer feminists. Uh, they call you, a, I'm pretty sure they call you a fascist. 
Yeah, yeah, and and their citation for that, like, ah, it's not even doesn't even adhere to their own rules. Their mm -hmm. citation for that is like someone else said that I was a fascist, and mm -hmm. an organization said that people who belong to organizations who believe this one thing that I believe I belong yeah. to that organization once are also sometimes involved with fascism. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like that was the level of quality to make that, that statement. Mm -hmm. uh, cause I'm very careful about stuff that I say, cause people mm -hmm. will do what I say and like, you know, like, or respond to it. And, and I have to, and I know that this stuff sticks around for forever. Yeah. So I, I don't just run my mouth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was always very careful, even though, I mean, like, I can't run from the fact that, yeah, I spoke at MPI and yeah, I uh, spoke at American Renaissance and uh, the European groups that, I've, you know, published my books and spoke for, I mean, I, 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 I plead the fifth or, or whatever on uh, European groups because I'm like, I don't know what's going on in Europe. Like, what you guys are doing versus what America is doing is totally different. Their government's different. Everything's different. Um, you know, if you want to publish my book, I'll, you do it. Uh, you know, like, and, and, uh, but I, I went and spoke over there and was denounced by Antifa with a, with a megaphone in German on the street. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> and you're just like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, uh, like and, and uh, the, the nice little German lady who was with me was translating for me. And so she's like, she's saying that Jack Donovan wants to kill all women and, and put them in slavery and stuff like really, really uh, like over the top stuff that I've never said. Uh, but she's Holy. like shouting this with a megaphone down the street of a small town. And like, and it's just, uh, apparently they pay their, the government pays the anti over there. So like they, they literally showed up in this small town, created this big scene almost in a way that looked like they were bored with it. And then like left, you know, like they just had to come and do the thing and then they leave. And, um, uh, it was really, really staged and weird. And they, yeah, but so there are all those people that are like obsessed with me and write weird stuff about me and like the Wikipedia thing. Like I said, that it was, I can't run from that information and I wouldn't expect them to exclude it. Uh, you know, like, cause obviously people have a right to know that I, it was in the room with a bad man at some point, you know, like, and I, and I think honestly, that makes my criticisms of some of those guys ideas more valid. Cause I've actually, like when super right wing, whatever white nationals, all those kind of guys want to have a conversation with me. I'm like, I have literally heard everything that you could possibly tell me. Yeah. Uh, like I, I have been in the room with the guy who gives you the ideas that you believe. Yeah. And he's full of shit. And so are you. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I feel like I have a better right to talk about that than some leftist person who's just like literally gotten everything from college. Mm -hmm. uh yeah or from like you know other leftist blogs or whatever i I've, I've i've i know why those guys are wrong i know what they're right about and i know what they're wrong about and uh so i wouldn't have expect like a thing like wikipedia to exclude that information but man they they, they try really it's hard. the way they frame it and they don't really they don't talk about the other things they just like here's yeah, they, Here's all the negative that we can possibly and frame it in a particular way. And they show it, you that it's literally like the first opening thing of it is a communist indictment. It's, it's literally like he, here are the charges mm -hmm. against Jack Donovan. That is how it is framed here. Mm -hmm. It was, it's not like what I actually write about. Cause if you've read my work, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I write about masculinity and like it's, it's, it keeps me up because that's my legacy. I mean, this is what I'm really proud of. I mean, the way yeah. I'm in is like, it's almost 10 years old. It's a really good book. And I was right <laughs> about a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, if you want to talk about the gang theory of masculinity, you want to talk about like, uh, you know, the tactical virtues, you want to talk about the, you know, what I talked about the difference between uh, different levels of situation, uh, civilization and the conflicts that are between those things. Those are all stuff. That's good shit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's not in my Wikipedia at all. It's not nothing of substance that I've actually written. It's like here are the indictments well, against Jack Donovan. The positive thing about that is everyone who actually knows your work and follows you, they know that I've, the internet's full of shit. They know that. If they oh, go yeah. On, yeah. Like you don't have to well, worry. And those guys are already listening to me. It's it's the shitty thing is it's like the person that Googles me for the first time. Yeah. Like if my uh, yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Like if people look you up and they don't know who you are, they'll be like, oh my god, this is. It's like here's oh. a Batman that says the bad thing, <laughs> and uh, you know, and uh, you know, but it was it, like I said, that's why I, I like that that 
Tim Cool, uh, that the Tim Cast uh, yeah. thing of, of James O'Keefe saying the same thing. Because, yeah, like I'm the same thing. I'm like far right, whatever. I'm like activist. I'm like, am I an activist? I don't really, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm more of an activist than anybody else on Facebook or like, you know, who does podcasts? Yeah. You know, like I, I've never marched in a protest or anything like that. You know, like, I mean, I would, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's not at this point, I would, but like, that's not really what I we consider. I mean, I'm a writer. I write about masculinity. That's what I've been doing for in most of my adult life. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. But it was it was just cool to hear him say that he's had the same dry, exact problems, and then everybody else on that show had also had the same experience. Because yeah, basically, I, I I brought up the the lady who edits my Wikipedia, um, Molly White, because she's actually not anonymous. Uh, and, and she's a computer programmer in Boston and she, uh, she's been in the media, like she could have her own Wikipedia page. She's been in the media like 10 or 15 times saying that she uses as a net representative of Wikipedia saying that she uses it to advance her political causes. And I brought that up in the discussion, the discussion of Wikipedia, like as we were discussing my account and, uh, she said that she felt targeted and then that's when I was banned. That's like someone, <laughs> someone you, it's pretty much the equivalent of someone having a political spin on a dictionary or something, you know, like changing the, the definitions of words to yeah. better suit their ideology. It's like a Wikipedia. It's supposed to be an encyclopedia. It's supposed to be like, you know, it's supposed to be unbiased, just information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and which is why it's like you should say the things that the one side says and what the other side says about this guy or this subject and then just let it rest. But uh, they 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 won't like, uh, you know, like they wouldn't include any good quotes about me. Yeah, like we couldn't get it like Art of Manliness. That site has been around for like 15 years or something. It's like the OG men's site. It, it's if that's not established, I don't know what is, mm -hmm. uh, but in that realm and uh that's not a considered a credible source for mm -hmm. uh you know like i'm like this guy's a mormon he's reviewing a book by a pagan you know mm -hmm. like it, like we can't have anything i mean because he did a long in-depth review of the actual content of my work and but that's not usable because you know like but you know if if a uh, you know lesbian in new york has a rant about me then then that which is poorly researched and includes verifiable lies uh that's that's okay that, 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 that's like that's what the people are saying you know so it's just it's really frustrating but i think it is important to draw i mean obviously we talked about it for a good bit but uh it's important to draw attention to people so people who know how corrupt that organization really is at this point Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's interesting. I've come under, I, I had an interview with Elliot Hulse yeah. and he said some things that were not even, we were just talking about marriage and, and then all these, these social justice warriors got on my page and the one guy, initially he didn't say anything that was super disrespectful. He just said, you know, I listened to your podcast. You were promoting marital, marital rape and all this shit. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I, I kind of. I'm pretty sure Elliot Hulse doesn't promote marital <laughs> rape. <laughs> so I was like, like there was this, he was talking about like what the purpose of marriage was and all this stuff. Just, right. you know, very Catholic traditional marriage ideas. Yeah. And this, this kid, the social justice kid comes on. And initially I, I was engaging with him, but I, I engaged with him and said, okay, well, this is, you know, I just talk to him said this is why like this is what he meant like listen to the context of the conversation and then he comes on like oh you guys are fucking stupid just starts disrespecting like commenting blah 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 saying all this shit just like like rape culture this that all these you know buzzwords right and then and then i just i say fuck this i just block this kid and then all of his friends like he literally had like 50 he sent 15 of his little fucking minions on my page and they're being like this guy promotes rape let's deplatform him and blah 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 and i'm like jesus christ man listen to the conversation <laughs> and uh this also happened to me when i uh there's this girl i know in my hometown who is she's becoming a lawyer so this is even more this is even more terrible she went out to uh the university of victoria i believe she's becoming a lawyer and she found my page because she she knows who i am Sorry, my 
camera keeps turning off. Um, and I posted something about the red pill. And like, I don't know if you, you probably know a lot about the red pill, like Rolo Tomasi and sure, sure. the rational male. And I, I was posting some concepts and, and he was, she, she pretty much said that I was promoting rape culture because the red pill is a certified hate group or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, you're a lawyer. She actually had my phone number. So she was texting me. She's telling me that I am promoting rape. And I'm like, well, what is your evidence for that? You know, like these people who are going to academia and they're even for something like becoming a lawyer, they're saying like, I'm promoting this rape, which is like fucking the most heinous thing you can say. Yeah. And then has no, they have no evidence. And that's what they're doing to people online. They're just fucking headhunting and saying, they'll just say something outlandish. And just cause they, you know, they're the good guys. They're saying the thing that, is the good thing to say so they don't get fact checked they don't get questioned and they just fucking come after you for no reason i'm just a fucking i just got a tiny little podcast a tiny page i can't imagine what happens to these guys that have a large following they probably have fucking people following them around trying to fucking dig up dirt so that they can discredit people and that's why some people are a little bit scared to show their faces but if more people do that that's gonna you know expose these fucking snakes yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's why, I mean, if more people do, I mean, that's like the, the Wikipedia thing with me. It's like, I was great to hear, great to hear that those other four guys had the exact same experience that I had with it. Yeah. Uh, Cause it, it, it delegitimizes their, their, uh, you know, their, their claim <clears throat> to being objective, which is cool. And uh, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, obviously you have guys who have bigger followings. I mean, do get, you know, like a lot more hate mail and some people go after it. Some people, you know, like I get less hate mail than other, than people think I do because, because like I said, I don't attack people. Yeah. Um, so I'm just the bad man who says bad things, but like, I'm not like going after, you know, like feminist blogs every day yeah. and stuff like that. Cause like, yeah, that, that seems like a waste of time anyway. And uh, it's just, it creates negativity more than anything that I'm actually trying to do, you know? So it's, but you know, so some guys go after that because you can get a lot of uh, attention for that. Uh, you know, and attention can be good and bad. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it is a real thing. I mean, I do have. I had to. I filed a police report earlier this year because Antifa was. Uh, I got some some weird texts uh, from, and I was pretty sure that my house got cased. Uh, like, like so, literally, we're standing in the kitchen. Being was that like, before you moved or after you moved? No, after I moved. Yeah. After I moved, like they, they put out a big, uh, locally, someone screenshotted it who, you know, doesn't even live here and said it to me. That's why I know, but it, it, one of their Facebook groups or something, someone, I guess, follows them to see what they're up to. And, uh, it was a whole bunch of people like posting pictures of me and saying I was a Nazi and saying that, uh, I should be beat up on site and, uh, like all kinds of shit like that. And, uh, yeah, then I started getting like I got a phone call saying like you know like like you know we we know more than you think you Nazi prick, and uh, oh, you know like don't know shit, bud. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But they don't care. They don't care about real. I got a, I got a long angry string of texts from some chick, which I was like, well, thanks because now you just gave me a list of suspects because I just went through your whole uh, friends list and screenshotted everything everyone you're associated with. And, uh, and so I sent that back to her and I was like, and you know, you've now associated with this debt, basically death threat that, you know, like I got. And, uh, you know, so, you know, after the phone call, I did make a police report because I have a friend who's a, 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 a lawyer, a prosecutor for the United States justice department. And uh, we had lunch and he's like, you just get that on file. You know, it's like if I were a prosecutor, if anything ever happens, if they, you have that on file, it's probably better, yeah. you know, like that, that, so they can pull that and be like, Hey, he made a complaint that he was getting harassed like X amount of years ago. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and nothing's like that happened since, but I'm pretty sure like when I moved here, there was a little bit of that. And, uh, yeah, I got, a, I got someone, we were both standing in the kitchen and someone walks by my house, like smoking, look, trying to look like Johnny Depp like someone who didn't belong in the neighborhood at all, like was randomly and kept looking over at my house. 
oh like fuck. weirdly uh, and then like, i God. i hate that feeling man just knowing that your home is compromised yeah and then, and then the guy like went and uh like the guy i live with I, I don't know i guess it had like an extra margarita in the morning and like decided he was gonna get spicy and went followed the guy down the street and was like what's up what are you doing what are you, what's going on and then the guy turned around and walked back to his car that was parked on a street and got in it and drove away so it was very clear that he wasn't there and he was just there to walk around my neighborhood for a minute yeah and uh but he took pictures of his license plate. So we have that. So that's on file if we ever get sure. that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there are real consequences to this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like, but you, and you have to be ready for that, that, that possible reality. But, uh, yeah. you know, that's, you know, like, uh, founding fathers of America were all traitors, yeah. you know, like they, they were, they were all pretty much going to be hung, you know, like if they, if, if, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the, if you want to do something that you think is good and right, there are going to be consequences for that. Doing the Lord's work has consequences, man. <laughs> for sure, it does. <laughs> uh, before we wrap up today, I just wanted you to, uh, or I just wanted to ask you, do you have any upcoming projects on the go that you want to talk about? Or, or is it all uh, under wrap? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, a uh, big thing that we've been working on for the past few months, uh, very related to a lot of stuff that we've talked about today uh is chess magazine so chessmagazine.com it also has an instagram profile uh it's an online magazine but we're going to publish a a physical edition at the end of the year oh wow um just because it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of money to do a, a magazine on a regular basis um but and the, the whole concept of chess is a you know to kind of compete with the gqs and esquires of the world which are not really even for men anymore no and also to, uh, you know, because of the way the world is, you know, and, uh, you know, as, I, as we've been talking about with Wikipedia and all this stuff, if you Google people like Ian Smith, you're just going to get a whole bunch of shit, you know, like a whole bunch of like left wing propaganda. Mm -hmm. And like, if I can go and meet that guy and humanize him and say, this is what he's really about and this is what he's trying to do, because these are good guys that I'm talking to. They want to do a good thing. Yeah. And if I can humanize them in some way and, uh, you know, give an alternative perspective and have it in print because they, got, <clears throat> you know, you have all the podcasts in the world, but like no one listen, you know, like they have to actually listen to that, but it doesn't come up on Google, you know, but if, if I can have something positive about this guy who I think is doing something good in Google, you know, in, in a way that's searchable and, and readable uh, at a quick, you know, glance then i think that it could be very helpful for mm -hmm. what's going on uh it's something that i wish someone would do for me <laughs> you know like i would love to have some positive profiles of me that are like readable and so i'm trying to do that for other people uh so uh you know i would love to you know like this week obviously uh, you know to move into that uh, other other things i have going down um i'm getting ready to do, do a speech for the 21 convention um on a couple weeks from now in orlando and we'll be obviously getting to hang out with the uh, you know a bunch of the other speakers in in the men's movement and so forth and so you know it's we're gonna obviously i'm taking my camera and we're gonna collect a million pictures so i have the original photos and so i can call and do those guys interviews and stuff at, their, at a later date and uh, do features with all of them you know elliot hulse will be there a uh, whole bunch of other dudes. Uh, can, I can, if I can sit them all down and get some good pictures of them for the magazine, and then uh, you know interview them, and and because uh, I've met most of them anyway, so I already have personal anecdotes. So uh, you know, that's a, that's a big project. Obviously, twenty one convention. Um, speaking about the the new book, uh, Fire in the Dark, which is obviously the big book that I'm promoting right now, and uh, I've been working on a tenth anniversary hardcover edition of The Way of Men. Uh, and I, it's it's mostly done formatting, but because of supply chain issues, I don't think I can get it out by Christmas now, because the hardcovers take longer to produce, and then like oh, just with everything like, going on, I'm already signing off on things with the with the printing company saying like we might run out of paper, so can we switch to like this paper if you know during the holiday season, and I'm like okay, fine, but if they're doing that now. It took me two months to get my hardcovers produced uh, for Fire in the Dark. So I'm like, uh, I guess it'll 
be a truly 10th anniversary edition and it'll come out in the 2022. Uh, so I'm working on that. So that'll be, I think, something to look forward to for a lot of people because a lot of people wanted a hardcover edition and I'm putting other things in it. Like I'm going to put Violence is Gold in it and I'm going to put uh, No Man's Land and also um, there's an essay like Men, Gods, and Runes because there's so many of these dudes walking around with oath tattoos, like uh, with the rune tattoos from that essay that I wrote uh, a while ago. So I uh, wanted to put that into, so this is my kind of posterity edition. So uh, I'm working on that, but yeah, just to, and obviously my Instagram is at start the world. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and taking the time to speak with me today. No problem, man.